Good morning. I am Sister Mary Williams, and today we are going to have our empowerment lecture series today on the scripture on, in the Old Testament, which is Leviticus chapter 13, verses 45 through 46, and also Luke in the New Testament, which is the 17th chapter, verses 11 through 19. So before we get started, we just want to open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this another day that you have made. Lord God, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity, Lord God, to share and to hear your word. We pray now, Lord God, that everything will be said to your name's glory, honor, and praise, and for the benefit of your people, in Jesus' name, amen. Our lesson topic today is attitude of gratitude or an attitude of gratitude. And the key verse, verses that I'd like to share with you is taken from Luke, which is 17th chapter, verses 15 and 16. And it reads, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. And he fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. And this man was a Samaritan. As we look at this and we think about gratitude, uh, what causes a person to express heartfelt gratitude or thankfulness? And I would have to say that as a person who understands their situation or maybe a weak condition that they have, a person who recognizes their need of something and that they themselves cannot or does not have the strength or power to accomplish it on their own. And upon receiving such a gift, one can't help but to give thanks to the one because of what has been done for them. So as we look at this text, both texts, we have two coming together. And the first one in Leviticus, in the Old Testament, third book of the Bible, it represents, um, the Old Testament represents the law of Moses. But this book in itself, it, the whole thing is about God's holiness and his God's holy standard. We also learn of uh, God not being approachable in, in the sense that when the children of Israel came out of Exodus, you see God's deliverance of his people. And so now being brought into um, a relationship and in covenant with God, the, there has to be rules established. So God begins to give them their law um, and the things that are pleasing to him and acceptable to him. And so here also now we, uh, we look at also the book of Luke, which is in the New Testament, which represents God's grace. And when we look at this book, we see how Jesus meets God's holy standard on our behalf. He has made us to become approachable, or that we can approach God because of his own personal sacrifice, his atonement that he has made for us, even Jesus who is our high priest. And so today our lesson tells of a story of the cleansing of ten lepers in Luke chapter 17, 11 through 19. However, we find about the law of leprosy in Leviticus 13, 45 through 46. And it tells about the restrictions that they were under and what the rituals they had to perform by going to the priest to be declared healed and cleansed of lep leprosy before they could become included into the general assembly of the people. And so we have... Um, this, this leprosy, and what's interesting is, is this leprosy that it's talking about is a, it's a, a malignant skin disease that starts with one spot and then can spread to all parts of the body, which is, it makes it to be contagious. And so the people, um, anytime a person had such a disease, we're gonna learn about what they had to do in order um, to be accepted or declared as clean from such a 
disease. And so here we go. Let's, let's look at Leviticus. It says in verse 45, it says, those who suffer from such a serious skin disease must tear their clothing and leave their hair uncombed. They must cover their mouth and call out, unclean, unclean. And as long as the serious disease lasts, they will be ceremonially unclean, and they must live in isolation in their own place outside the camp. Sounds kind of familiar with what we're facing right now, but I'm going to go on with the COVID. Um, but those who suffered from this skin disease, um, from a physical standpoint, also suffered from an emotional and mental point of view. First of all, it says that the lepers had, they were clearly identified as lepers through their physical appearance. So in other words, uh, they couldn't fake it. You, you couldn't fake it, okay? Now if we're not feeling well, we can get dressed, we can put on our Sunday best or what have you, we can comb our hair, we can put on our makeup. But in their case, the law stated that they had to wear, to tear their clothing and uh, cover their mouths and call out unclean. And so they were clearly identified to others um, as to what their situation was. And it said they had to cover their mouth. And so when we look at that today, if we bring it up to, to 2021, we, we see the the wearing of a face mask, a covering um, to help prevent COVID-19 or the spread of it. And so they had to warn others, they had to call out, call out to warn others of their presence. And so also what it meant to be ceremonially unclean, it meant that you were defiled in some way, like having leprosy, you were separated from the worship in God's temple, and any person or thing that they touch was also made unclean as well. And so then it says that they had to live in isolation. What does that sound like? It sounds like quarantine from if a person now even has um, contracted COVID-19, they're to stay in quarantine. Um, last year, they put rules in place to where, uh, what people could do and where we had to put on a, a face mask, cover ourselves, and that kind of thing. It was basically the law in, in many of our states, if not all of them. And so you could clearly see that that was something that we had to do in order to help uh, prevent the spread of COVID-19. But the thing of it is, it says that they, they were in isolation. They had to be outside the camp. And what I mean, it's not like a camp, like you go camp um, at some park or something like that, but they had to stay outside and separated from the rest of the congregation of Israel. They were considered unclean. They were defiled. And, and you might think that this is, you know, this was pretty harsh. Um, but God has a standard. And, and, and really, it, it was just, it was demonstrating uh, that the people of Israel were to be distinct from any other nation that surrounded them. And God had a set of laws or rules that they had to follow. And so uh, to, to preserve the people as well um, for, the, for, for not spreading the, the leprosy. And so when you think about what they had to go through, the sadness of being alone, and, and they, had, they lived in what was called a colony of lepers, right? And so it was outside of Jerusalem, okay? That holy city, they were outside the camp. And so here it says that they had to stay away. 
basically from the, the general population of Israel. And, and it's, it's something because the blessing of being in the congregation, the blessing of being in the house, the blessing of being included, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. They didn't get to experience that. Any festivals or anything that was going on, they could not be a part of it. So how sad they were to have to experience such a thing. And emotionally, you couldn't even try and make yourself look good. You had to look like what you felt or what you were experiencing. You couldn't cover it up. And so here, as we look at this, so we see the plight of what we come to now in, in Luke 17. We, we look at the plight of these lepers who are going to meet Jesus. And so verse, we look at verse 11, and it says, As Jesus continued on towards Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria, and he entered a village there and met ten men with leprosy who stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, as you look at this, first of all, they're not calling out the right thing. They're supposed to be saying unclean, unclean, okay? They're supposed to be crying that out. But they recognize him as being master, okay? And so what they do is, is they, they say, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. And so it says that they looked he looked at them and said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Here we see, uh, you know, when we look at this, uh, there's a, there's a, there's, uh, I want to share with you in the book of Luke, also in chapter 5, verses uh, 12, through 14, there's a man with leprosy, and he, and he sees Jesus, and he comes to Jesus, and he says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus said, I am willing. Be healed. And so at that moment, the man was healed of his leprosy. And what you see here, whereas in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, I shared that uh, there was a process in which you had to go through in order to come into the presence of God, okay? There was, was an order. He, the law, it represented Mount Sinai, but liberty that we have in Christ, Mount Zion, represents the freedom that we experience. And Jesus says, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so there's an invitation, there's a difference between the Old Testament and the New. God says, you, this is the furthest you can go, but Jesus says, come to me. And so the invitation and the grace that God extends to us is, is so awesome. And, and just like this leper, Jesus was willing, and you see that he reaches out, and he's, always, he's touching. He's touching the people. And so, but what he says here, when Jesus told these ten lepers, he says, go show yourselves to the priest. And it says, it says also in the same chapter of Luke, fifth chapter, it says, then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let them examine you. Take an offering, take the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. And this will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. The, 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 the priest operated as maybe what you would call center of disease control, the CDC, okay? They were responsible for the people and, and looking at the people, examining them to make sure that uh, they, they didn't have a disease or uh, 
they were cleansed of it. They had to be examined. And so when we see this, they were cleansed by their obedience to go and show themselves to the priest. And so the, the showing of themselves to the priest also represented like a certificate of release and that they were free of the disease. So the question is, why was it necessary to go to the priest if Jesus had already healed him in the text in chapter 5 and also in chapter 17, 14? Why did he have to do it? You know, we think about Jesus. He didn't come to abolish the law. He said, I came to fulfill it, okay, and to also fulfill its righteous requirements. You know, when you think about it, you know, Paul talked about it often. You know, Jesus, he, he, Paul asked the questions, is, is the law bad? Certainly not. Okay, it wasn't bad. It was good. And, and so, but the thing of it is, is that in the law, the sacrifices of animals was no more good. Okay, it was no more good because Jesus would ultimately take that, that place of the animal, but he would take the place of our sins and be sacrificed as the Holy Lamb of God. And so here it says, and when one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. And it says he fell to the ground at Jesus's feet, thanking him for what he had done. And this man was a Samaritan. It's interesting that uh, the writer who is Luke, um, Luke was a Gentile. He's the only Gentile uh, writer in the Bible. And he shares with us in the, uh, Luke, the book of Luke and also in the, the book of Acts. But the details, he says that this man was a Samaritan. So when we look at this, the one who has an attitude for, of gratefulness for what God has done for them will always come back to Jesus and give God thanks. This Samaritan, all of the, all of the, the men were healed of their leprosy. All of them were healed. But there was something different about the Samaritan. And so it, he understood, the Samaritan understood his poor condition and his need for deliverance. And Jesus met his need. And then it says in verse 17, Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Now, even Jesus himself points that out. So it lets you know that the other nine were Jews. Okay? The other nine were Jews. And so, of course, the Jews represented they are God's people. They have a knowledge of God. Um, However, it doesn't necessarily mean that those who are religious, that they always see the grace of God or his goodness or even think to say thank you. So here they receive the, the blessing for being cleansed or healed from their leprosy. And in this, and in this case, being healed, or excuse me, being cleansed and healed or made whole is, is two different things in which we will see here. It's the, what we see here is that the Samaritan, he had a different, as a, as a different, a different result, a, a different expression as a result of his, this experience that he had with Jesus. All of them, encountered him, but only one of them recognized what had been done for him. 
only one. And so when the Lord makes a change in your life, there is a, an expression of thanksgiving or gratitude for what God has done because you know that absolutely no one, not even yourself, could do such a thing and to lift such a burden uh, of, of, of weight from this suffering disease. And so Jesus says, and, and the thing about it is also is that the Samaritans were despised by the Jews. They were basically half-breeds. They were, they were Jews and they were Gentiles. They were not pure Gentiles, or excuse me, they were not pure Jews, which uh, they were despised by those who were of the race, and they would actually go all the way around another way just so not to walk through a place like Samaria. And so it said, so when we think about this, so many times, so many times we, for, we can forget about God until another situa situation arises and we cry out for another miracle. The thing with the, the nine is that they receive the blessing of God by being healed. They received the blessing, and they ran away clutching that blessing all to themselves. And what we'll find is, is they missed the ultimate blessing of being made whole. And so Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. In some versions of this, this scripture says, your faith has made you whole. So Jesus rewarded his faith with the blessing of salvation. Not only the, the, the healing um, from the disease of leprosy, but remember what I said, leprosy represented actually sin, okay? And the truth of the matter is, is that any and every disease is a byproduct of sin. And so by faith, he received what he needed both physically and what he ultimately needed spiritually. He was made complete by his faith. And, and I share this with you. The very fact that they had to suffer outside the camp, it, it, it reminds me of the word of God in Hebrews 13, where Jesus, it talked about him, he suffered outside the camp. And, and so the sacrifices that were made had to be made, especially those of defilement, had to be made outside. And that... It, outside the gates of, of the city, outside of Jerusalem. And so that, and when we look at that, we see Jesus who sanctified us by his own blood. And when we look at what God has done for us through Christ Jesus, we can't help but to express gratitude in our hearts towards God because God has done for us through Jesus Christ what absolutely no one else could do. No one else could help. When there was nothing else, no one else could help. Love lifted us. And so this is an awesome lesson as we look at these lepers who were, who were cleansed, but only one received a, the, only one received the gift and the blessing of God as being completely healed, both physically and spiritually. And so I just want to close with that. You know, the leprosy, you know, it, was a, it was a physical manifestation of a spiritual condition. And that's what we are all in, a uh, spiritual condition, one of sin, one that, that has a death sentence to it. You know, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so just thanking God for what he has done for us, Jesus who is our high priest, 
and who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He was in all points tempted yet without sin, and that's why we can go boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. So I thank God for all of what he's done for us, for me, uh, and we just have to know where God has brought us from and where he is bringing us to. And so I just want to close in just prayer, just thanking God for what he has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, Lord God, that something has been said, Lord God, for better understanding, for encouragement, for even more trust in you, that our faith Lord God, in you is what makes us whole, what makes us complete. And we just thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who made it all possible for us through his death on the cross and for the forgiveness of sin. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Amen.